یسوسی کے زندہ جلالی با برکت اور فتح مند نام میں تمام فیس بک فیملی کی خدمت میں پاسٹر امجد فاروق کا اور اسی طرح خدا کی خادمہ پاسٹر سوزین جن کا تعلق الاس کا یو ایس اے سے ہے آپ سب کو بہت بہت سلام قبول ہو ناظرین جس طرح آپ جانتے ہیں کہ پاسٹر سوزین ہمارے ساتھ خدا کے کلام کی خدمت کو سار انجام دیتی ہیں اور اسی طرح تمام بیماروں کے لیے دعا کرتی ہیں اور وہ پاکستان کے لیے بڑا بوجھ رکھتی ہیں پاکستان کے لوگوں کے لیے اور پاکستان کی گورنمنٹ کے لیے دعا کرتی ہیں سو آج بھی ہم ان کے ساتھ مل کر کلام خدا کی خدمت کریں گے اور اسی طرح تمام لوگوں کے لیے گورنمنٹ آف پاکستان کے لیے دعا کریں گے اور جتنے بھی لوگ ہمیں واچ کر رہے ہیں اگر آپ میں سے کسی کی کوئی پریئر ریکویسٹ ہے تو آپ ہمیں ضرور لکھیے گا ہم آپ کے لیے آپ کے گرانوں کے لیے بھی دعا کریں گے سو پاسٹر سوزین وی ویلکم یو ان پاکستان مینی پیپلز آر واچنگ یو آن فیس بک لائیو ان پاکستان الاسکا یو ایس اے اینڈ کینیڈا اینڈ آل اراؤنڈ دا ورلڈ سو بیفور یو شیئر دا ورلڈ آف گاڈ واٹ ڈو یو وانٹ ٹو سی ٹو دا آل دا پیپل Well, it's always a joy to bring the word of the Lord, to uh, pray for the needs, and to hear the praise reports of what God is doing with the people of Pakistan and all around the world. So I'm excited to be a part of it, and I'm excited to be here with you today, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we would, if you have any kind of sickness in your body, any kind of prayer request, you can write us. We will pray for you and your family, your city, your country. It is no matter wherever you live, but we will pray for you. So uh, before uh, I would uh, like to invite you, I will pray in Urdu language. Hallelujah. 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 Kudamand Rabbul Faj, Lashkarun Ke Khuda, Asman Aur Zameen Ke Khalik Aur Malik, Tera Shukr Ada Karte Hain. آج کے اس خوبصورت دن کے لیے خدا من تیری بیٹی تیری خادمہ پاسٹر سوزین کے لیے ان کے گرانے کے لیے تیری شکر گزاری کرتے ہیں اور اسی طرح خدا من ہم اپنی پوری ٹیم کے لیے تیری شکر گزاری کرتے ہیں خدا مند ایک ایک فرد کو تیرے پاک لہو میں چھپاتے ہیں اور جتنے بھی لوگ ہمیں واچ کر رہے ہیں خدا مند ایک ایک فرد کے لیے اور زیادہ برکت کو انائنٹنگ کو مسا کو مانگتے ہیں خدا مند آج اس پروگرام کا کرنا خدا مند تیرے جلال اور برکت کا ثواب بنے اور اسی طرح بہت ساری روحوں کو بچانے کا ثواب اور وسیلہ بنے اور میٹنگ کا سارا آنر خدا من تیرے بیٹے ہمارے خدا من یسم سی کو ملے تیرا شکر تیری تعریف ہو تیرے زندہ جلالی اور فتح مند نام سے یہ مانگتے اور پا لیتے ہیں آمین آمین پریز دا لارڈ سو پاسٹر سوزین وانس اگین آئی ویلکم یو سو رائٹ نو آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو ریکویسٹ یو پلیز شیئر دا ورڈ آف گاڈ دا لارڈ پٹ ان یور ہارٹ Thank you, Pastor. Today, our text is going to be in the Old Testament, and it's from the Song of Solomon, verse, or chapter 12, verse 15. Catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vineyard. So many times in our faith journey, we have this great desire to do mighty things for Christ, but we feel like we're not moving forward, like God has perhaps put a wall around us, and we can't advance any further. We're stuck in a place and we don't really understand why. Well, I want to suggest to you today that perhaps one of the reasons might be secret sin. Now, as we grow and mature in the Lord, he's busily in the process of sanctifying us. That means he's making us holy and he's cleaning us up on the inside. And some of the things that he might have allowed us to hold on to when we first came to faith, well, now... He's wanting to remove them from our lives because he wants us to come up higher in him and to go deeper into the things of God. Hebrews 12.1 instructs us, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that he set before us. So today I want to speak to you for a few moments about the pets we keep, the danger of holding on to secret sin. And I want to begin with this short illustration. Suppose you own a business 
and your business is doing quite well. Well, you have two employees that work for you and one day you discover that one of your employees has been stealing from you. Well, you're surprised, but you decide, well, I'm not gonna say anything about it because it's probably just a one-time thing and it's not gonna happen again. But years go by and over and over and over again, this employee keeps stealing from you and you've done nothing to confront it. It's almost as if you're turning a blind eye to it and you're even making excuses for why he's doing this. Well, this employee becomes very bold because nobody's catching on or confronting him and he's stealing more than ever before. And now it's begun to affect your profits. Oh, it's only been a little bit at the beginning, but now your profits are going way, way down and you're losing a lot of money in inventory. So what should you do? Well, the answer would appear obvious, but there really are two choices. You can expose the thief and you can remove him from your business so that you can prosper or you can continue to go the way that you've been going, ignoring what's happening, and eventually you'll face ruin and you'll have to close your business. Well, the obvious choice is to expose and expel it, right? Or is it? Well, I have to confess that at times I get extra angry with the devil. I get furious watching good people that I care about and myself included, continuing to allow the devil to steal from them, to steal your hope, to steal your joy, to steal dignity, integrity, uh, to steal so many things and, and see families torn apart because of secret sin lies and deception and pride and anger and worry and fear and judgments and gossip and addictions and manipulations and the list just goes on and on and on. Now we're born again believers so you would think that we were without excuse and I wish that that was true. So we have to ask the question why? Why do we let the devil co to continue to rob from us? Why do we allow him to come into our lives well, we practically invite him into our homes. And in some instances, it's almost as if we pull up a chair for him to sit at our table to make him comfortable. And we even invent excuses for him to stay. I mean, we should see the insanity of this. We allow him to steal from us at will, not realizing what's really going on or what it's costing us. For you see, allowing the enemy to remain rooted there is actually very costly. Now, this is a rock, and this rock represents my pet sin or my secret sin. And don't look surprised because we all struggle with them at different times in our faith walk. And no matter how much we try to downplay our own private pet, we're only lying to ourselves. We, well, I like to compare my pet to your pet sin because it makes me feel better about myself because I just tell myself that yours is worse than mine so I can justify keeping it but it's all bad. Remember, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. But just what are those little foxes? Matthew 13, Jesus tells a story about a farmer who's going out to sow seeds. And he talks about all of the places that that seed lands. And in verse 22, he speaks of the seed falling among the thorns. And this refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke out the word and make it unfruitful. What it's really saying is that you hear the word of God, but the distractions and the anxieties of this life and the deceitfulness in the abundance of external possessions or even pursuing them, they choke or drown you. They press around you and they throng around you so that they almost suffocate you making the word without fruit. And so the word can't freely operate in your life because it's been choked out by your other pursuits. Your pursuits are causing worry and they're causing anxiety. And so the question I wanna ask is, when do we mostly turn to our pet sins? Well, it's usually when the cares or the frustrations of this life come and we feel pressed or anxious or fearful or hopeless we just want to disconnect and feel nothing. Those cares are the very ropes and the chains that the enemy uses to bind us up. And they numb our spirit man and they totally feed our fleshly nature. 
And that's when the part of me that's not dead in Christ, it raises its ugly head and it says, I'm not hurting anybody. Besides, I deserve this. It makes me feel better and you can't tell me what to do. I'll do what I want. I equals pride and feel speaks to the fleshly nature. First John 2.16 says our foolish pride comes from this world and so do our selfish desires and our desires to have everything we see. None of this comes from our Heavenly Father. And if it doesn't come from our Heavenly Father, we know where it does come from. And it's Satan. And Satan uses our anxiety and our cares and the desires of our flesh to construct these chains and these ropes that bind us up in our spirit, man. And that makes us helpless to stand against him. Mark 3.27 states that no man can enter into a strong man's house and seize his belongings unless he first bind up, which means to fasten with chains the strong man. So here's another example of what that looks like. You're asleep in your bed and two men sneak into your house at night to rob you. They catch you by surprise, they overpower you and they tie you up. And from that position, they can pretty much take whatever they want from you and you're helpless to stop them. And it's the same way here. When we have the power in the person of Jesus Christ living inside of us, we have his word living and active inside of our hearts and our minds. This makes for a very secure house. However, when we allow our secret sins or what I like to call our pet sins live in our hearts. Also, it leaves that door open to our house, but open just the tiniest little crack. And Ephesians 4.27 says, do not give the devil a foothold. Give no opportunity for the devil because he's an opportunist and you better believe that he will take advantage of every opportunity afforded him and that tiny little crack is all he needs. And here's how he operates. We allow the cares and the anxieties and the distractions of life to overwhelm us, to bind us up and, and choke out the desire for the word of God. And we feel like we're drowning and we just want it to stop. And so we turn to what our flesh promises for relief instead of turning to prayer and to the words of Jesus. You see, the war is always in the mind and it always has to do with saying no to what our fleshly nature wants, demanding that we pick up our cross and do it, what Paul said, to die daily. And when we give in to our flesh, we're bound up and the enemy is allowed to plunder our lives and he plunders our homes and our relationships and our jobs and our finances and our help. And most importantly, he plunders our children. We let him steal from us over and over again. And that's what he does. He hates us because we're valued by God. And he's a thief and he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But our Heavenly Father has a different plan. He sent Jesus his son that we might have life and have it to the fullest. But it says might have. That means you have to choose to have it. And if you keep playing with the enemy, you might not have an abundant life, at least not eternally. So what can we do? Is it possible to break free once and for all from the control of the secret pet sins that we have? Yes, it absolutely is. Romans 6, and I'm going to read this from the message translation of the Bible. It says, our old ways of life was nailed to the cross with Christ a decisive end to the sin miserable life, no longer at sin's beck and call. You were dead to sin and alive to God. That means you must not give sin a vote in the way that you conduct your lives. Don't give it the time of day. Don't even run little errands that are connected with that old way of life. Remember, you have been raised from the dead into God's way of doing things. Sin can't tell you how to live anymore. You're living in the freedom of God. Hallelujah. But how do we step into this freedom? Well, first you have to recognize and be honest about the secret sins that you're still keeping. This isn't a judgment on you because we're all in process. Even the Apostle Paul instructs us to do a heart check. In 2 Corinthians 13, 5, he tells us that we have to look and see if we're still in the faith. 
Next, you must name them. Is it gossip? Is it control? Is it manipulation, lust, alcohol, drugs, astrology, the occult, murmuring, pornography, anger, self-righteousness, money, sex, gambling, food, spending money that you don't have. You can insert that own place that you struggle with, that own secret pet sin. And there's many things that can become a snare. Well, what do you turn to instead of God for comfort? Ask Holy Spirit to reveal it to you now. And then it's important that you identify this sin. You have to call it by name. You need to bring it out of the darkness, out of secrecy, and then you confront it honestly in the light of God's truth. And then we repent of them. That means we turn away from them and we surrender them to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And finally, we expel it from our lives forever. It's not a one and done type occasion. Each of us need to do this routinely. We as believers are moving from glory to glory and God is beckoning each one of us to come up higher, but it's hard to go upward if we're dragging a bunch of heavy chains behind us. So what's God saying to you? What does he see when no one else is around? What is the one thing in your life that you don't want anyone else to find out about? Well, it's time to get rid of these secret sins. Even if you enjoy it, you know in your heart that he desires you to turn to him and not to that. Well, while it's quite true that sin is pleasurable for a season, it only lasts for a season. And then it leads to emptiness and death. Only God can truly heal and only God can truly satisfy and fix what's hurting inside of you. You can give in to lust or, or, or have that drink or whatever it is that makes you feel better. But after that 10 minutes of euphoria lasts, you're left sad and frustrated and empty. And the devil is tormenting you with guilt for what you've just done. And that just leads to this sick, sad cycle of shame and guilt. Matthew 5.30 says that if, if your right hand offends you, cut it off and throw it away because it's better to lose that one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. If you think what you're doing in secret is not harming anyone, think again. The Bible says in Numbers 14.18 that the iniquities of the fathers are visited onto the sons down to the third and fourth generations. So look at your own family tree. Now we sometimes say things like, well, this runs in our family. Depression, suicide, alcoholism, sexual promiscuity, anger, violence, poverty, divorce, you name it. It's like we view these things as inevitable and we accept it. But why don't we confront our pet sins and say, I cut this off of me and my family once and for all in the name and by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's break off the generational garbage and instead of coming into agreement with it and allowing it to stay one moment longer, let's reverse the curse in our family line and release the blessings of God over our children's futures. What is binding your strong man? Do you love your pet sins more than the souls that God has for you to win? Do you love your pet sin more than your wife or your husband or your child? You cannot live the life that God has fashioned for you to live before the very creation of the world if you continue and try and play in both arenas. It's not easy, but it is possible. And it's a battle and you must be prepared to fight it. The flesh always wants to be stroked, but you have to be prepared to learn to subdue the flesh. It takes courage. You've got to be willing to expose your pet sins to the light of Jesus Christ and let him take it from you. Because once you relinquish your right to hang on to these things, then the strong man will be set free and your enemy will not be able to rob from you in this area again. You can be free and you can begin to set in motion a chain reaction that will bring freedom to you and to your whole family for generations to come. Holy Spirit will help you because that's his job. He's the paraclete and he's the one who walks alongside of you. And as you read his word, he'll build you up in your faith and he's going to show you how to use those weapons that we've been given to fight against the devil. 
your strong man will emerge and you'll truly have the strength in your soul to sustain the attacks of the devil. So what about you? Are you tired of dealing with shame and condemnation? Do you feel as if you're bound up with chains in a particular area of your life? Do you want to be free to live the life that God created you for? The one that Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross for you to have? Abundant life? If that's you, I want to pray for you right now. Right now, you can be free. It's a choice. So open your heart. Father God, I thank you for the one that's hearing this word today. And Father, you tell us in your word that those things which are done in secret will be brought to the light. And I'm choosing today to bring my pet sin into the light. I repent of turning to it instead of to you in times of stress or struggle. Break the chains that have attached the sin to my life and cover that area with the precious blood of Jesus. I believe you died to give me freedom in every area of my life today. And I choose to step into that freedom. I reject shame and guilt and condemnation because you have totally taken my sin away and I am a new creation in you. And I cancel every legal right that the enemy once had in this area over my life in the mighty name of Jesus. And I surrender myself fully to you today. And I ask that you would teach me to turn to you in everything that I need. Lead me into that abundant life, a life that's filled with victory in you. And Father, I cancel these assignments that have been in my family over the generations. I cancel them now off of my children and my grandchildren in the mighty name of Jesus, that the evil one will no longer be able to affect us in every area of our lives. I release the blessing of God. I release it into my family. I release it into my home and to my children in every area, Father. As I surrender this part to you, I ask you to come in and fill it with your Holy Spirit. Fill me to overflowing. And Father God, if there's one today that's never received you as Lord of their life, I just ask that they would open their heart right now and say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I know I need a savior and I give you my heart. I give you my broken life and I trust you, Father, that you will change it and give me a new heart and a new life, one with purpose, Father, with abundance, Father God, with a hope and a future. That's your plan for me. I turn my back on the old way of life and what the enemy had, and I face you, Lord, and I receive what you have. Help me to walk out your plan for my life in every way, Father. I surrender my life to you in Jesus' name. And Father, for those that are, are sick in their bodies, Father, or sick in their minds, or sick in their hearts, Father, we release the mighty healing touch of Jesus Christ yes. through the airwaves right now to minister in individual situations, Father yes. God, yes. to touch the broken bodies, to heal these that are infirmed of the enemy, Father, the, the diseases, Father, and those that have been stricken in their bodies, Father, those assignments from hell, Father, that bring disease, Father, we cancel them now in the mighty name of Jesus, and we break their hold, Lord God, and we release your healing, Father God. Let the blood of Jesus flow through their veins, Father God, and cleanse from every infirmity father god remove yes, it yes. from their body father in that crimson flow father the healing that was purchased on calvary's tree lord god we receive it into our bodies right now in jesus name every pain every ache father every discomfort father every a malady or affliction in the belly father god every pain in the back in the neck in the head every headache father god every virus father god will bow in the mighty name of jesus it will bow, Father God, and we release your healing into those situations. And Father, for those that are tormented in their minds, Father, in their in their emotions, in their memories, Father, stricken with depression, Father, or regret or suicide, Father, whatever it is, Lord God, or mental illness, Lord, you put the mind of Christ in us, Father God. And in you, Father, there is no defect, Lord. There is only perfection. And so, Father, we release the perfection of the mind of Christ yes, over yes. them. 
that they would be right in their mind, Father, that they would be sound in their emotions, Father God, and that they would be walking in right spirit right now from this day forth, Father God, Hallelujah. that they would be healed in every area of their mind and their will and their emotions. And Father God, for those that are still struggling with the COVID, Father, and the after effects, Father, in their finances, Lord, in their jobs, Father God, however they have been adversely affect, Lord God. We release the blessings, Father God, of yes. Almighty God over them, Father. Yes. You own it all, Father God, and your hand is not short. So, Father, we release the blessing, Father God. We break lack, we break poverty, Father, and we release the abundance of God in every area of their life, Father, that there would be more than enough. And Father, we pray for the leadership yeah, in the yeah. world, Father, and for the situations going on, that, Lord, you would be Lord of all, that, Lord, that the people would fall on their face before you and cry out, Lord, humble themselves before you, Lord, and you will hear from heaven, and you will come, and you will heal our land. And so, Father, we just ask you to come. We ask that you would do this mighty thing, Lord God, that we would be at peace, Father God, and that you would be lifted up and there would be a time of great ingathering of souls, even in this time that we are on the earth. Father, we partner with you. Father, we partner with you in what you are doing even now. And so, Lord, we just ask that you prepare the ways, prepare the vehicles. Father, give us increase in the areas that we need to continue to bring your word to those around the world who have yet to hear, Lord God. For you are truth, Lord, and your truth is the only thing that will stand in this time. And Father, we bless your name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word today. We ask that you would seal it in the hearts of those that have heard it. And Lord, that the enemy would no longer steal from them, that this word would be seated in them, Lord, and never, ever go away. But Father, this truth would stay, Lord God, and that they would reap a mighty harvest, Father, when they apply this truth to their lives. We bless your name, Father. We thank you once again for this time. And we seal it with the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pastor Suzanne, thank you so much. You preach a very powerful sermon. Thank and thank you for your prayer. God bless you richly and keep you in his powerful hand. And use amen. your mighty way for his glory all around the world. We will see you very soon in Pakistan. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. God bless God you. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.